This video is sponsored by Surfshark. It's Thunderball. I couldn't remember anything about it apart from not liking it as a kid. Yeah. And it was incredibly interesting. I, I mean, genuinely really interesting to see it because, mm-hmm. and I, I was I was stunned how, how, about how not very good it was. And then I started getting fascinated by why it wasn't very good. And then what that told me about why I enjoyed the other ones. <laughs> I've defended this film to the hilt because I, I stand by the fact that the first two acts are pretty good. Yeah. But as soon as someone dips a toe in the water, it's like, yeah. it's like gremlins. As soon as it gets wet... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she must. Well, yeah, I mean, all this had really, when you think about it, is that they had the groundbreaking underwater photography, which they got their money's worth. Yeah, out of. that's about it. Other than that, and I think that that's that's what's really hard to see now from from the mm. modern world is that scuba was a new thing. Breathing underwater was brand new, and it's very hard to put yourself back in in that mindset of going. It was spectacular to be underwater. Uh, but we begin with a coffin with JB on it. Oh, and mm. I thought I'd remembered the wrong one. Mm. And then I realised I'm thinking of You Only Live Twice. Yes. You, think, you think they're going to open with faking his death. I like the ones that start when he's dead. Oh, me too. <laughs> and it gets found by Anthony Ainsley's master. <laughs> he died on the job. Yeah, that's what, that's yeah. what I want. But mm. yes, it's not, it's not him. No. It's, it, it's someone else. It's Jim Jack- Bowen. <laughs> Jim Bowen. <laughs> I'll never get that speedboat. That would be actually that's quite a good one for, if he'd won a speedboat at the beginning. Well, Bullseye all... had a serial killer, didn't it? So it's about time I had a spy. <laughs> it's, a, it's a coffin with JB on it. You're meant to think it's James Bond. Yeah, yes. no, it's Jacques Bouvier, right? Who was who murdered a couple of Spectre agents? Oh, sorry, a couple of MI6 agents, I should say. And Bond's like, oh, I'd like to have killed him myself. But then he notices something, Joel. What does he notice? He notices, and this is brilliant. <laughs> he notices that when the widow. Uh-huh. Uh, goes to the hearse, the the, the funeral car, or whatever mm-hmm. sort it is. Uh, the widow opens the door herself rather than waiting for a man to open it. And that's the giveaway, yeah. that it's clearly... Because because the world, everything's out of joint then. The world's upside yeah. down if a woman can open the door of a car. Only a strong man can open the door of a car. He saw a so, dog in a tree after that. <laughs> yeah, it's, oh it's my crazy. God. <laughs> all, uh, all bets are off because a woman's opened a door and he goes, that's a man in drag. Yeah. And then they can have a fight. I've uh, come to offer my... Sincere condolences. My dear Colonel Duval, I don't think you should have opened that car door by yourself. <laughs> but we've also got the overcranked when he throws the chair across the floor. <laughs> oh, they yeah. overcrank it so it goes at about 70 miles an hour. That's, that's Bond's superpower, isn't it? it, it is. he, has, he has lots of undercranking abilities in mm. this. Yeah, I Just love a it. Lot. It always makes me laugh. So he then gets in a fight with Bouvier and then strangles him with a fire poker. Yeah. And then thinks, I need to make a quick getaway. <laughs> so I'll strap on this really cumbersome jetpack. This is this is the point at which it's really early in the film mm. for it to not be spectacular enough. Yep. And the problem with it is, it's a jetpack. And they keep saying in all the press releases this, it's real. It's a real piece of technology. Yeah, yeah. It's a real US Arm Air Force jetpack. Mm. It's real. The Bell Textron rocket pack had been developed for the army for battlefield use. The only two men qualified to fly the amazing machine were brought to France to perform the 21 second flight. And because it's real, it's boring. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because it's a jetpack. And he uses the jetpack to get off the roof mm-hmm. onto the ground. Yeah. Which means that he's used jetpack to use what he could have used a ladder for. <laughs> if, he, if he got on the jetpack and went to the moon, that's yeah. James Bond. <laughs> that would <laughs> but, be amazing. <laughs> And he goes up in the air like a Christmas decoration on a string, <laughs> and he dangles. And and you're trying to say to yourself, "Well, that's real. That's a real man really risking himself from jetpack." But it looks like they've got a crane yeah. and put. It looks like you know when you used to get those little um, parachute with a soldier with a plastic parachute and throw it off the roof. He looks like that. Yeah. And it's it's the best gadget in the film. Yeah. It's the best stunt in the film, and it's so boring. Mm-hmm. And it's over about four minutes in. <laughs> and it saves him no time, because by the time he's got it off, the guards are right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he could have shot those two guards and just walked past them. Anyway. I like the fact that they put it in the boot, and they're in such a rush that when they actually get into driveway, that you can see the boot's still open. Yeah. <laughs> That's how well, good this jetpack is. It's it's in the it's the DB five. He's got the Aston Martin back, which is nice mm. to see. But yeah. I, and he puts up the little uh, bulletproof thing at the back, mm. and then when the people go up to him, he squirts them with water. Yeah, and, he, and I want to sort of go not Bond flamethrower <laughs> machine gun. 
Hmm. Not squirty water. Flower. Yeah. <laughs> then water. Yeah. Glitter. Then feathers. Then feathers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or turn them into a papi- on, a, on toilet paper, papier mache. Yeah, but it's 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 oddly it's what a kid would do. Mm. It's like a, the water pistols them, and then it sort of fades. Morris Binder's titles come in, and it fades from water to water, and you go, oh, you, even at the beginning, water is disappointing, and it's going to be disappointing yeah. throughout the whole film. Yeah, it's. I'm, I'm afraid that is the theme in this film. You know what's really disappointing when you're watching Thunderball frame by soggy frame and start thirsting for some other underwater espionage adventures. And you don't have this video sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark VPN keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all the info sent between your device and the internet, and can swap the real location of your device with a new one across the globe. So when you're in the mood for dipping your toe into a stunts and snorkel stuffed action spectacular on Netflix, it can be a drag to find the movie you want isn't available in your region. What if you want to watch Deep Blue Sea 3, but you're currently not in Canada? Or maybe you want to give Waterworld another whirl, but you've never even set foot in the Netherlands. Well, with a push of a button on the Surfshark app, you can unblock and access media libraries and streaming services from loads of different locations. Just click the country you want, and hey presto! Hours of summertime subaquatic content is there for even the most insatiable cinephile to sink their teeth into. Not only that, but as any good spy knows, robust cyber security is crucial these days. Surfshark can prevent hackers harvesting your personal data when using public Wi-Fi, and their clean web feature blocks ads, trackers, malware and phishing attempts, allowing you to surf the web safely. Maintain your internet privacy by masking your IP address, and making sure your location and download history aren't linked to your identity with Surfshark VPN. Use code BANYABAT to get 83% off and 3 months free with an account you can use across an unlimited number of devices. Plus, Surfshark is also giving away their antivirus for free this month. That's so much value you might just get the bends. And hey, even if it turns out you think I'm talking a load of old barnacles, Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee so there's no risk in trying it out. The link is in the description below. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video and now on with the show. I like how there's no excuse for it being called Thunderball. And that no. at, some, at some point, someone from MI6 goes, and we're calling this mission Thunderball, which mm. is why the film's called Thunderball. And you know, that's not a reason. No, it's obviously wanted to win some cash. <laughs> Either that, or the villain. Because <laughs> he had Goldfinger. Mm. The villain should have ball. Yeah, that, <laughs> that make, uh, <laughs> make a really big rumbling yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look after you. Until Good morning, Mr. Larson. Nice to have you back again. Yeah, <laughs> it should be it should be named after the villain's freakish power. That's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 No. yeah. I think you're right. <laughs> like Golden <laughs> Eye, you should have a literally like Peter Falk with a golden yeah. eye. Golden Eye. Yeah. 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 And Quantum of Solace could just be a guy who does puzzles. <laughs> Scrabble. Yeah. <Big> Scrabble fan. <laughs> yeah. You need to. It was the shorthand in those days to show that you were a baddie. You had to have some sort of defect. Yeah. Yeah, physical, physical sort of. Uh, if you're disabled, you're evil, mm. which is the the Bond message, isn't it? If you, Goldfinger if you... had a gold finger. Yeah, and, and no, Doctor the... No had um, metal hands for some reason. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, Christopher Lee had that golden penis. Golden penis. <laughs> <laughs> the man with the golden dick. That's yep, it, yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah, they've all got something special about them. But he's um, yeah, he does something. He's got he, he's sinister, and you know he's spectery, which mm. is good. And then he goes and talks to all the people in Spectre, doesn't he? Yes, yes. We- Spectre is made up of people from other films. So if I'm yes. releasing, it's like, it's like it's like Dreyfus's mate from the Pink Panther films is in there, Andre mm-hmm. uh, Maran, isn't it? Yeah, he died He's, recently. And you go, I wonder if when they're in the other films, if they're secretly working for Spectre. Definitely, that's the reason that Basil got the wrong um, <laughs> got the wrong food and the gourmet. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a Spectre operation. <laughs> How is it going, number four? I I gave him the cake, number one. How is the chalky operation proceeding? <laughs> yeah. Did you yeah. mess with his alternator so he couldn't start it? Yes, I did, number one. <laughs> did you leave a branch nearby for comedic value? Yes, I did. Oh, that, that makes it all again. It was single extended universe. It all makes sense. Did you, I, I really like as well that because Blofeld is sort of addressing them from it's a lovely big Ken Adams set like a, oh, it's like an evil evil United Nations is a great joke mm. um, and again actually it's one of those things that I think maybe watching it now you go oh this isn't very spectacular but you realise that no one had 
No one had put no. people in rooms this big before. That <laughs> no. they're, they're in a preposterously big room, and just above them is Blofeld, and he's he's sort of behind a, a Venetian blind that's a bit like the things from Naked Attraction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> sort of lifting up. It won't reveal his face, but you never know which bit of him it might reveal. He lifts up the cat. It's just his knob out. <laughs> It's like he's trying to date evil people from behind a, a lifting screen. Um, so, yeah, so then Largo gives his big pitch <clears throat> on the monologuing catwalk, and uh, he's got a, a ransom of $280 million from NATO, and uh, their agent, Count Lippy, is at a health farm called Shrublands in the south of England near a NATO base. It's odd. Shrublands doesn't sound Bond enough, does it? No, it sounds like a pubic wig company. <laughs> Um, but he goes to he goes to his physio from from a lady from mm. a blonde lady, doesn't he? Yeah, and she, Patricia she, Fearing, and she has to strap him down. Otherwise, there'll be a Me Too incident. Yes, well, there <laughs> nearly to... is. She straps him <laughs> yeah. down because he's about to do it. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's just really handsy. Um, oh, yeah, it's horrible. I mean, this is the worst of Bond in this. Apart apart from the ones where he slaps people. Yeah, this is the worst sort of sex offender Bond. It's it's just routinely. Mm. Uh, yeah, and again, it's got sort of. It's of its time as well, but it's got sort of he's at a, an institution and he's got his hands all over the nurses. It's very carry on. It's pure. I think mm. pine wood must be built on an ancient Indian groping ground or something. <laughs> but it's so it comes up to the floor and uh, yeah, so she straps him down and she straps him superly because he's got onto what it's basically a sex robot. Yeah, <laughs> she straps onto a thing that just jiggles you about. It's like it's it's, it's, it's what it was like to be bummed by a ghost. <laughs> and Lippy and Lippy comes in and sets it to Henry the Eighth. <laughs> it's the, it's the, what's weird about this is this is the classic Bond scene they do it again in, in Moonraker isn't it with yes. the, the test thing and you push yeah. the push thing up into a danger level mm. and it's never explained I can understand why on a on a NASA training thing they built with a danger level why is there a danger setting on a, on a thing in a spa it doesn't make any sense <laughs> who needs the setting that kills you <laughs> <laughs> but it's a simple production error in the manufacture of the, the sex ghost bombing machine. Is it Milligan MP? <laughs> yes, it's got sort of a conser- conservative death accident setting on. <laughs> they put a lemon and a stocking on your head and then put it on. <laughs> Turn it up to. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just a, it's a lovely nuts moment. You, you weirdly, because of the world of Bond, you read it and go, "That's fine," and it's mm. not fine. It's mad. Why is no. it? Why, why does it go up to ten? God, yeah. Because well, we also get Lippy going to that phone box and calling in, and Major Duvel. Yes, that's it. He's, he's in bed with Fiona Volpe, who I like a lot. Yeah, she's great. She is, I think, the best thing about this film. Definitely, I think uh, is it Luciana. Palazzo, or mm. whatever. she's absolutely brilliant because the, the, the idea of a red-headed female Bond mm. who's just uh, they've tried that again in lots of the other ones where he's got another, there's another sinister agent there's another one in the Union of Twice who's yeah, they, nearly a direct copy Yeah, they pair them off, it, they, once they've done it with her they do it again, lots mm. of them, there's always a sort of female uh, there's Michelle Yeoh I suppose in, in, in Tomorrow Never Dies, there's, yeah. there's another agent either on his side or against him who's, who's every bit his equal, mm. but I think I'd forgotten that she's great, she mm. is just great in this, she really sells it yeah. Um, and she's really hot. She, they, they sort of throw her away a bit, but she's every time she's on screen, it's really good. Yes, I agree. But when Dervel goes to the door to leave for his top secret flying mission, <laughs> he's greeted by a back projection of himself. That is the nightmare, isn't it? That you mm. meet yourself in back projection. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I know it's a technique they had to use at the time, and I think it's fairly effective. Actually, that's a good idea. That's that's a good classic Bond idea. There's, there's another one of him there. Mm. It's a duplicate. He's the bandaged man we saw wandering around Shrublands. Yeah. Because pl- in those days, they thought, well, if you've had plastic surgery, that means you can look ex- identical to someone else. Yeah. And I don't and, think that's ever ever happened in the world. And learn to do the voice. Yeah. It's a, it's a thing that's in all 60s spy stuff. Yes. And has never happened. I think people just thought, like they thought with computers being able to do everything in the yeah. 70s and 80s. I think in the 60s and 70s, they thought, well, plastic surgery means... They get loads of like play doh and put it on your face and make you look exactly <laughs> like that person. Yeah, and it's no, but in this case it did. What are you trying to say? I changed my mind. Hundred thousand dollars is not enough. Studying the film, the reports, plastic operations, voice lessons. Make it a quarter of a million, or get someone else. Uh, but yeah, so he sees uh, an ambulance pulling into the shrublands with the bloke with the bandage. So he goes to have a look, and this is where I think Sean does his best work. This bit because he goes in the, in the room, unwraps Durval and finds him, 
And then as he's about to phone it in, a knife comes through the window. And the way he kills the guy is so cool. Yeah. Where he smashes the knife out of hand and then pulls him through the broken window and then wraps the phone around his head and he just walks off. Yeah, you think he's going to strangle him with the phone, but it's mm. like he needed someone to put the phone just to yeah. hang it off him. Um, there's a bit of shower. Isn't there a bit of shower curtain nonsense as well? Sort of pulling cur- curtains back, and the foley yeah. in this bit is amazing. Oh god! They're, they're, when, it, when he opens the curtain, it's, it sounds like a scalded cat. It's mm. just been, it's just a noise, and you realise that that again, maybe it's something you don't notice anymore. The the the, the sound effects are so loud mm. compared to what natural sound effects would be, and I wonder whether because this is a film where so much of it is underwater and they can't do sound effects. Mm. They've really amped up all the volume in the yeah. rest of it because it's an incredibly noisy fight and quite excitingly noisy. But that, I always think the old Bond films, well, I mean, You Only Live Twice has got the worst, for my, to my mind, the worst shoe sound effects I've ever heard <laughs> in any film. They're like clanking them on, on granite by the sounds of it. It's horrible. So meanwhile, up in the Vulcan, v- Angelo gasses all the crew, kills them, and lands the Vulcan in the water. There's a great line with lights, the underwater landing lights. Yes. And he- Is there anything else in sight? No, all clear. Switch on the underwater landing lights. It's those little moments when you go, this is just kids playing. This is mm. uh, the phrase underwater landing light. So you can land the plane underwater. It's a real Thunderbirds toy in a bath moment. Mm-hmm. It's great. <laughs> they, they're going to dip their plane in the bath, and that's what you want to see. I hope it? they don't leave that on at night. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, so then um, Angelo's in the, in, the, in the plane, and he's waiting for his extra money. And, of course, Largo comes in and cuts his air pipe. Yeah, but... What this has revealed as well, mm. the, 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 all the sequences of the plane where he sort of depressurizes the Vulcan, that's really exciting. Mm. And the Vulcan itself is really exciting. And it goes underwater. And as soon as it touches water, it becomes boring. Yeah. So you dip anything in water in this film, it becomes dull. Absolutely. And what's interesting about that sequence is the moment you realize you be, it's, it's quite tense. All the airborne stuff's great and the mm. landing's great. Mm. And it goes underwater. And one of the effects guys on this said the problem was that you can only go slowly in water because yeah. your mask comes off because it's a scuba mask. And so everyone's going at like two miles an hour and there's no sound. Mm. So the things that make Bond exciting, which is snappy editing, people moving really quickly and it being really noisy, all disappear the moment they go into water. And you sort of, it's the first warning that chunks of this, as soon as it goes below the surface, mm-hmm. it's going to suck all the life out of it. It's going to suddenly go slow. So you've got Bond. Bond is in, in the DB5, mm-hmm. and he's zooming around uh, Silverstone or wherever they're, they're prote- trying to pretend is a road. Blatantly a racetrack, yep. And yeah, yep. He's, he's going... Yeah. And obviously, but the exciting thing about that is you're, they're going really fast. It's not under crank. He's speeding in the mm. thing, and a black car comes up behind him, mm. and it's exciting. And then a motorbike appears behind that, and he goes, yeah. this is great. This is better than being underwater. Yep. Brilliant. Bond raises his gadgets, but doesn't use them. That is the failing of this film. Yeah. Is that I remember there being another great Aston Martin chase from from Sean Connery, yeah. and I suddenly thought, "Oh, this is it," um, and it isn't because yeah. he he does that classic th- thing of just he's got the gadgets and he won't use them, and that's kind of classy, I bet. But mm. if you're eight, you don't want him. And behind him is is uh, Volpe on the the amazing little gold motorcycle with rockets on it, mm. all of which is real. So mm. she gets the gadgets. Mm-hmm. So she gets to have the amazing motorbike with rockets on it. And again, you're sort of wanted. Sort of say, well, Sean's got shit gadgets, mm. and the baddies have got brilliant gadgets. Yeah, when's Bond going to have some good stuff to do? Yeah, he pulled a man through a window, but that's about it. <laughs> yeah, but then Bond goes back to um, MI6, and we're told that the Home Secretary is holding a meeting. Yeah, most importantly, he goes back and he puts his hat mm. on the hat stand, mm. and again, it's saying, you know, you liked it when he threw the hat on the hat stand. Mm. He won't be doing that this time, and it kept making me think of those fucking interviews where they go we're taking bond back to its roots mm. and every time they do it, it's a mistake don't because no. it started in its roots and then it went somewhere absolutely spectacular that's never happened before that it invented this new thing that wasn't just a spy novel it was preposterous and brilliant and fun and that's the contract with the audience is that he's impossible and magic and he's a superman he's not a superman you can't identify with a superman and this is full of these little moments where they go but we'll make it more realistic and you go no no that's that's where you came from mm don't want it to be gritty. No. I want him to throw the hat and it land on the hat stand. I want him to fiddle with the gadgets and impossible things happen. 
but I, I don't I don't know the way he puts his hat on the hat stand. He should throw it. This time he should throw it from further away, possibly from Sheffield or yes. something. <laughs> you should see it sail to the air and land. A money penny should go, that's brilliant, and then they should have sex. <laughs> from Sheffield. Yeah, because he's got Q has given him a remote controlled uh, secretary groping device that uh, like the one uh, like his spy snooping robot he has. Yeah, it should yeah, be like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Really cumbersome. <laughs> like Inspector Gadget's hands. <laughs> no, it's, just, no, it's more like a big track. Yeah, but can the it. hands have those cartoon gloves? The yeah. white gloves? Yes. <laughs> With the three stripes on them. No. <laughs> Mickey, <laughs> Mickey Mouse hands. Yeah, yeah. Mickey Mouse hands. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to see. But they, they cut. They cut from there to the very big government room. This seems cumbersome and unnecessary. They should go oh. to the conference room. It's the worst conference room ever. It's like Everything's a too mm. huge. Thing. Well, they've got all the, the double O agents there and the people there. I'm thinking there'll be so much echo. No one better hear what you're saying. Uh, it's too big, and it looks a bit like they've been. Uh, miniaturised down they're yes. sitting on matchboxes yes, because the maps are too big to, to point at anything on the map you need a ladder and like a 19 foot pole you could just give them a map like a normal sized map this is where Ken Adam reached for a cigar but accidentally picked up a massive LSD doobie yeah <laughs> like oh no what have I done <laughs> and also, they, they have the conference room they, put, they push the button and the, the wall slides back and there's a map of where the things happened that's the size of fucking Leicester Square billboard and then when they actually brief Bond they take it to a small room where you can actually hear what they're saying yeah because you can't actually brief an agent in a bloody stadium it's no. stupid <laughs> Do you notice that sitting next to Sean Connery in the ra- in the row of W agents who you don't see is Ringo Starr? Yeah, amazing, <laughs> and the guy next it? to him is Ringo. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. They, the Beatles were in everything at that time. They were. Who needs it? My dear girl, there are some things that just aren't done, such as drinking Dom Perignon fifty three above a temperature of thirty eight degrees Fahrenheit. That's as bad as listening to the Beatles without earmuffs. They're, they're handed the like project briefing things, and then, as you say, he goes to see M, and uh, he's been told he'll report to Group Captain, Captain Pritchard in Canada. And Bond's like, I don't want to go to Canada, I want to go to Nassau. And then, and then, but, um, <laughs> what, what, why does Bond want to go to Nassau? Because he, there's a sexy lady there. Well, also, M says, Is this to do with your enthusiasm for water sports? <laughs> uh, no, far no, from me to King Shane, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, we've seen what Bond's kink is, and it's it's going to bed with a mink glove like Gordon the Gopher. <laughs> it's part of their sex play. <laughs> we've seen him in bed with a woman with a furry hand earlier on. We think that it's not really water sports he's into. No, no. He's, he's, a, he's more of a furries man. Together we will make history. You all know who I am. Also, then Bond immediately ruins that by they mm. said, so what inquiries do you want to do? And he says, I found a picture of a sexy lady, mm-hmm. so I want to go where the sexy lady is. The, the, the lead that naturally takes you from a man you've seen dead to his sister mm. is a huge leap. Except the only thing that would drive you to think that was the most important logical thing to do is if the woman was Claudine Auger. And you'd go, mm. she's very sexy. I bet she was Miss France or Miss World or something. I should go and be as close to her as possible. Bond's, Bond's detective skills are just in his pants. Yeah, if it was Bella that's... Umberg, he'd be like, no, <laughs> yeah, I don't that, think I'm I just dead end. <laughs> I don't think she's connected at all. I've got no interest in that. Yeah, it's just, it's. there's no sense that his sister would be important, except no. that she's very, very beautiful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But that's then we, we, we meet Domino underwater and she's doing a kind of like underwater tribute to Back to the Future. <laughs> yes, yeah. hanging onto a sea turtle. Yeah, it's very, it's very sort of Little Mermaid finding Nemo. It's a bit yeah. Disney. I quite mm. like it. Yeah, but she gets her foot stuck in a rock. Yeah, luckily for her, she's being watched, shall we say, by, by Bond, by a man who's followed her to NASA just based on a photo he fancied. Yeah, it's like pulling a, a, a thorn out of a lion's paw. You mm. know, he's got her now because he's rescued her foot. But he also um, gives her a massive compliment, doesn't he? He says, most he girls said. just paddle around. You swim like a man. Yeah. Like, it's obviously like she's got like big balls. In her. <laughs> Maybe she's been storing clams or something in her, down her trunks. Yeah. Uh, so she and a sea like cucumber. A <laughs> exactly. Uh, but, yeah. I was right. Good and miss. You swim like a man. That's yeah. a brilliant thing to say. Lovely. Uh, and then he blows it all by... by Later on, saying he knows her name because her name's on an ankle. Oh, that's down again. 
I, yeah, he says, <laughs> on an ankle necklace. And you go, well, at some point that means you've been hiding under the table mm. <laughs> or sort of wandering around. It's, it's not the kind of detail you notice. So he's creepy again immediately afterwards. So it's weird. He also offers us some of his comps chowder. Yes. <laughs> it's a euphemism for it something. It definitely is. Um, so then he goes to the casino. We get the Bond and the casino trope thing. Um, like Shaman de Fer, moving a shoe around. That's good. Yeah. Um, and then there's some dancing. Dance, Largo dance. being uber competitive. Yeah. And he sort of lets her go and you, she's his niece or something. There's something. Oh, it's, a bit, it's a bit strange. But he um yeah, he I then does that now. thing Bond sometimes does where he just drops all thing that he's a spy by just saying, oh, I see you've got a spectre with you. Someone has to lose. Yes, I thought I saw a spectre at your shoulder. What do you mean? The spectre of defeat. That your luck was due to change. Yeah. What? Really, really bad spot. Least undercover. I've given away my name, and now I'm saying that I know you're you're a, a bad... You're, so you're a bad D, a baddie guy, bad really? guy. Bad D, yeah. That's Don't want to blow felt your cover. Just, yeah, it does, it's not even a pun, the Spectre thing. It says, I, see, that, I see you're a big number two. <laughs> <laughs> Un banco de 500 livres. Ah, oh, it's your Spectre against mine, huh? Le banco est fait. But then the bad guys, one of the other clues is the bad guys wear a ring that mm. says batty on it with a yeah. picture of an octopus on it. You go, yeah. if you're a sinister global organisation and they've got tongue tattoos, everyone's labelled. Mm. It's nice. It's easy, isn't it? It is easy. If only the Illuminati did that, make our job easier. Yeah. Why do you need to be a spy if everyone wears henchmen on their chest? It's really easy. Villain. My disco volante. <laughs> so then he asks her some questions about her brother. Don't know why he'd do that. And she says he's living in England and that he's really great and that he's a pilot. <laughs> and, and he's probably like, alive probably he's definitely alive what thing I like most to... about my brother is he's alive <laughs> there's two things I like about him one he's alive and two no one looks like him <laughs> 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 oh, dramatic irony is pretty heavy at that point yeah uh, and then Largo steps in and says look we're leaving now but to show Bond that I'm not a bad loser why don't you come around for lunch and he's like alright then so then Bond and he meets Felix who in this film is act- played by a guy called Rick Van Nutter Brilliant name. But Felix has been hanging around behind him for a bit. You've mm. seen him in the background. And for a while I thought he was being tailed by a member of Madness. Yes. Or, or, or his Den Hegarty from Darts. Yes. He's got like a big pompadour <laughs> and uh, dark glasses. Excellent um, Darts reference. We don't get enough of. <laughs> Something for the kids. But yeah, it looks like someone from, from a Stiff Records band. Um, but then we meet Q. Yeah. Uh, he comes out of the cupboard like some sort of sex tourist. <laughs> this is, I, I looked this up because he's so clearly at Pinewood oh, in his sex tourist outfit. Mm. I looked it up and thought, oh, poor Desmond Llewellyn. They, mm. they, they, they've gone to Nassau and they've not taken him with him. I looked it up. He was taken to Nassau. They didn't use him. Oh, wow. <laughs> they, he just got a hot there. <laughs> and then, when, when they got back to Pinewood, they went, oh, we forgot to film Desmond's bits. Yeah, and then did this in Pinewood. He I really bet pissed off. He came back looking like Hellboy. <laughs> Giant fucking red pants. <laughs> yeah, so Dustin Llewellyn had, had a holiday he didn't enjoy waiting to, and then they, they filmed all his bits back in fucking Pinewood. It's, still, it's yeah. all right, isn't it? Yeah. And he gives him his gadgets, which is an underwater camera. A watch? Gives, yeah, a watch. Uh, bre- underwater breathing apparatus. The one from Phantom Menace. I was just going to say sticks. the one from the Phantom sticks. Menace. Not sticks. Which must uh, be real because they use it in phantom menace right uh, yeah you're a jedi this is it he says this is your jedi breathing apparatus but have you noticed the things he gives him again mm. that one of the big problems of this fucking film what does any kid ask to you when you say we're going to watch a bomb from the say what gadgets have you yes. got and you go well there's a jetpack which is shit yeah. and there's a car he doesn't use yeah. and then the gadgets q gives him are all things from mankind they're mm. all things you buy your brother-in-law for christmas yeah. like it's really a beer brewing kit and a football <laughs> drone or something i i, I don't know it was, yeah, something like a little, a little thing that looks like a member of the England squad that you can plant crest to grow your grow hair <laughs> out of the top. Is it? They're just shit you men's laugh, That gifts. saves his life later. <laughs> you know, if a man, a man with crest for hair turns up in Act One, it will go off in Act Three. It's, but it's, that's Chekhov's man with crest Chekhov's hair. Chekhov's man with crest hair. Yeah, <laughs> classic. Largo but, sits on it in monologues, and it grows <laughs> up his arse. <laughs> So then they go to the Disco Volante at night. And for some reason, Bond decides to wear a bright red wetsuit with a bright blue mask yeah. and white pants. 
this is this is his equivalent of the uh, Union Jack parachute in yeah. that suit form, isn't it? Yeah. Is there, I can slip in unobserved, dressed yeah, he's, as he spotted as, just as a Smurf. Yeah, <laughs> Papa Smurf. Yeah, <laughs> the Papa Smurf colours yeah. are what you need. Yeah. Hmm. Because Papa Smurf was the only one in red, wasn't he? He had a red hat, yeah. Yeah. That, that was for spying. <laughs> Underwater spying Smurf. He did look a bit like Sean Connery in The Rock. <laughs> That's the dream casting. That Sean Connery is Papa Smurf in a gritty live-action reboot God. of the Smurfs. I mean, he was probably trying to get that made until the day he died. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, the one thing this has got, it is just Bond. Yeah. So you can follow who it is. Yes. You know it's Bond. He's wearing a distinctive wetsuit and he does some harpoon action, some grenade action. It all sort of makes sense. He does some underwater stuff, but you can follow it. Yeah. You're not lost. Right. And I think this may be a film in which they discovered why you don't set half a film underwater is you don't know who anyone is. Yes. You can you can follow one person at a time underwater. Jaws maybe learned two. That very early on. <laughs> yeah. if there was a hundred Jawses. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know who that, the baddie is. That, that's why Jaws 1, 2, 3, 4, they don't just put more and more sharks in them. No. It gets confusing. Jaws 2 isn't called Jaws T-O-O. Mm. It's not another Or Jaws, Jaws squared. Mm. So yeah. Fiona Volpe picks him up in her little blue car. Drives him 100 miles an hour. Which is brilliant. Mm. And at the beginning says, you might want to put on your seatbelt. And Bond won't put his seatbelt on because yeah. he's really worried that he won't be manly enough. And mm. he's thinking, what you do as a spy is to put your seatbelt on because she's trying to frighten you and she wants to, you to crash. You might yeah. crash. And if he crashes, he's, he, can't, he can't heroically not go through the windscreen <laughs> <laughs> because he's so manly. Yeah. But it's like she, she's challenged him saying, would you like to wear a seatbelt like a woman is mm. the kind of implication. Going. And he goes, no, I'm a real man. He, what I smash my face in. on it's, it, uh, it's such a strange thing to read with, with modern eyes. Yeah, it's just very odd. It's a bit like him jumping out of a plane without a parachute. Why mm. would I need that? Mm. I'll just land because I'm a man. Well, I thought, I thought I had to think about this. I thought they keep running out of them. They have to keep using things like the names of boats that Ian Fleming had. Mm. They keep looking at the old books, trying to pull out things that used that the name of his autobiography or his family motto. And I decided the next Bond film is going to be called Published by Penguin Books. <laughs> And they'll say, why? Why is it called Polish for Penguin Books? They say, because that's that's what's written in the front of all the books. It's mm-hmm. a very Ian Fleming. You wouldn't get it unless you're a real Fleming head. No. Or, or they could call the film The 007 Logo and Gun Barrel is Copyright Dan Jack Limited. Because <laughs> that's classic. All Bond, film, Bond, Bond, Bond fans know that. That's a little reference for the real heads. Mm. I think I should start using the copyright line. Yes. <laughs> James Bond. James Bond will return in The 007 Logo and Gun Barrel is Copyright Dan Jack Limited. I want to see that on the team. <laughs> Oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> uh, and also, the baddie should be called that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how they explain it. Or they can say, Bond, this mission is called, and then just, that's that's why it's done that. Yeah. You expect me to talk? The Bond barrel is licensed to John Jack Limited? No, <laughs> <Yeah>, Mr. Bond. <laughs> I expect you to follow copyright protocol. <laughs> so then he, he turns up his lunch date with Largo. As I say, leers at Domino horribly and yeah. then tells Largo that his shotgun is more fitting for a woman. That gun looks more fitting for a woman. You know much about guns, Mr. Bond? No, I know a little about women. And it's, and it's a huge fucking gun as well. I can't mm. work out how he's managed to gender the gun. Well, we also get the, the cool shot of Volpe using it with a fag eye out of her mouth, which is uh. quite cool. There's not a single moment she's in this season. Fucking amazing. She's no. really. It's a, it's a good. And again, it's a good Bond character. She's mm. fucking brilliant. Um, she's a better but, villain than um, Largo. Yeah, because what she does to him and what she challenges him with, she's not got henchman vibes. She's got. There's something so great in Bond fighting women mm. in things. Pussy Galore. It's great. It's just that is a good dynamic for Bond to be shown up. But then we get he Largo introduces him to uh, Vargas and he says he doesn't drink. Smoke or make love? And Bond said, "What does he do?" Yeah, and the answer is he's in the young ones. Yeah, it's Andy Little too. It's Andy Little too. <laughs> Stroke Mike Love, one of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Mark Vargo Largo says every man has a passion, and his is fishing. He asks Bond what his is, and then Bond just kind of looks at Domino and is like, Ugh. "Yeah." I mean, Why do you think I'm here? Why do you think I flew all over the world for no reason? Yeah. Luck, lucky there was a plane here because frankly, I just came here because my dick led me. And then, so. and then to make it worse, Largo says, "Would you mind taking Domino to the junk canoe?" <laughs> I'm like, "What the fuck is that? Can't she go on her own? Has, hasn't she been toilet trained? Is that what you call it here?" 
<laughs> no, but yes, apparently that's not, not it, rhyming slang. No, no it's not, it's not. <laughs> take her for a big junk canoe. <laughs> yeah, and it's and it's what it is. It's it's the Bond Mardi Gras that's always going on wherever yep. Bond goes. Yeah, people on floats. Mm. There's always one. Mm. There's always one happening. He seems to attract colourful floats. Yeah, <laughs> with with people in. Yeah. In headdresses. <clears throat> so then Bond goes back and speaks to Pinder, who's like his opposite number in um, Nasu, and sorts yes. out a power cut at Largo's mansion so he can uh, go and have a look round. Which is good. He seems to have Bond seems to have a lot of power. He sort of phones up the mayor and says, "Can you turn all the power off?" Mm. And think, yeah, all the like, the dialysis machines going off and shit. Going, That's fine, That's fine. apparently. That's fine. That's fine. I want to yeah. have a look at some pants. <laughs> Oh, also at this point, Volpe's taken mm. Paula, who's his, who's the lady assistant he had earlier on. She's been kidnapped from her room. So Bond goes to the mansion, has a look round, and then finds that Paula is dead. She killed herself with a suicide capsule rather than talking. Which is the same yeah. thing I would do if I was a guest on the Jimmy Fallon show. <laughs> I thank you. My God. So then the uh, alarms get raised in the compound, and Bond and a minion have a fight and fall into the shark pool. Well, basically, he gets to have some fun. There's a sh- there's sort of a fun shootout at the lair, mm. and there's a bit in it where basically so there's there's some gunplay and something. And at one point, Bond Bond climbs onto a corrugated roof, like on a shed. Yeah, and the music gets quite up, and he go, "Oh yeah," because he's on the roof of a shed. That's literally the most exciting thing Bond's done so far. Really, yeah. there was some stuff underwater I didn't understand, but him climbing onto the roof of a shed. That's about as good as Bond's had it this time because everyone else has had all the fun mm. and the gadgets so far. He's been given a watch and has climbed onto the roof of the shed, and then he's fallen into a shark tank. But he he gets out. He stabs the guy who's in the pool with, so all the sharks go to him, and he gets out. And he goes back to his hotel, and this is one of my favourite bits, even though it's a bit men behaving badly. That he gets back to his room and Volpe's in his bath. Yes, and she says, "Could you hand me something to put on?" So he gives her a pair of shoes. It's a good gag. I think it's a that is a good gag. It's a good gag. But Tony from Men Behaving Badly would do that. Yeah, but I think it works again. I think that works because she's been uh, sparring with him throughout. Yeah, and she's she's bested him a few times. She frightened him in the car. She's mm. she's looked cool. She blew up uh, the the guy who was after him. Didn't give him a chance to use his gadgets. She's emasculated him a lot, and this is kind of a nice thing to say. Look, I'm I'm giving as good as I get. I'm mm. being a bit. If he did that to a secretary or what. It would still feel a bit cheesy, but weirdly because she's a bit tough. I quite mm. like it. So they, 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 they have it off. Yes. And then he says, well, I've got to go to the junk canoe. And she says, well, I hope you close the door. <laughs> Wipe afterwards and flush. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're about to leave. And then all, all of the henchmen come in and she pulls a gun on him. Yeah. And she says, when did you find out? And he says, well, because you were wearing that Spectre ring. Yeah. Good bit of spying that one. Mm. And when did you find out? Well, you're wearing the same ring as Largo. She went, ah, oh, damn, foiled. Mm. Yeah. And then he says, and then she says, oh, well, you can talk what you did this evening. And he said, what I did this evening was for king and country. Planet you, Mr. Bond. Something you know so much about. My dear girl, don't flatter yourself. What I did this evening was for king and country. You don't think it gave me any pleasure, do you? I thought that there wasn't the king then. The yeah, queen. I thought. I thought that. I thought that's a classic Bond line where he can't have met a woman's in charge. It's terrible, isn't it? Yeah. So they go to the junk canoe by car, in the car, and then a drunk bloke comes in with a big bottle of flammable alcohol, going, "Ah, I'm your best mate." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and then, then, then there's fire. They're yeah. bound to be fire. Mm. And they shoot him as he runs off. But they shoot him with a special bullet that makes emulsion come out of your leg. <laughs> so, yeah, he's dripping paint. And he, he runs into the Mardi Gras, the, the, the junkadoo thing, mm. and it's all chaos and things. But for some reason, there's a dog pissing in the middle of the mm. street for quite a long held shot mm. of almost like Michael Winner obsessiveness with a dog yeah. doing something in the background of a shot that is totally distracting. Yeah, the, the framing of it is really odd. You just like, that dog's having a piss in the street for ages. Yeah, and he goes into the Kiss Kiss Club and yeah. the entertainment is a woman sort of waggling her boobs around while standing in an ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> so he grabs a woman and starts dancing with her and then Volpe asks to cut in and says it's pointless trying to escape. 
and then they're dancing and then a gun comes out from behind these curtains and he pushes her in the way and she gets shot. It's a standard bomb thing, isn't it? That mm. an arm an arm comes through a curtain mm. and, and a gun is on it. And I often wonder, thinking, can you can you shoot someone from that angle? Can well, you the curtain, see? Yeah, wouldn't the curtain stop? <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a shot blind. But yeah, yeah. it's a it's a trope. It's it's a Hitchcock trope. It's always there's a it's a, yeah. almost like a, a man who knew too much. There's a mm. while something's going on, a gun appears through a curtain. It's quite trad. Yeah, and shoots Volpe, which is annoying because she's still being brilliant when she gets shot. It's a good shot though because she gets she gets shot right between Connery's fingers. Where yeah, he, the bullet, he releases all the blood out of his hand. The bullet seems to go through Connery's fingers and then it's, oh, maybe it passes through from the other side and mm. is stopped by his hard, manly fingers. Yes. Because, yes, cause the, the, the wound is definitely underneath his closed hand. Yes. And then he dumps their body next to some people and says, mind if my friend sits this one out? She's just dead. <laughs> Which I like because it's yeah. not a pun. No, it's not. I, li- I like an un. Mind if my friend sits this one out? She's just dead. Are Susan and Lance, and I'm Excuse me, do me a favor. Don't disturb my friend. He's dead tired. Then the next day, him and Felix go and look at the Golden Grotto, <laughs> which sounds like a German piss club, uh, which is full of sharks. And it intrigues Bond for them to go lower. And then Felix is like, Why do you want to go lower? And he goes, Don't ask, just do it. It's like, Well, just. You could just tell him. I think the plane's yeah. down there. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he goes underwater. And um... oh no! Before that, because he, he looks, he looks through the the into the water using a bucket with a glass bottom. Oh yeah, yeah. And he, he puts he puts the glass bottom bucket into the water, and he can mm. see through it, and then can see where the Vulcan bomber is. Yeah. So so far, Bond's best gadget mm. is a bucket because yes. <laughs> it's the thing that helped him find the bomber. His mission is to find the bomber. He finds the bomber using a wooden bucket. Thanks, dear Liza. There's that moment of going. Well, that's that should have been a Q gadget or something. Mm. It, it, it's missing this thing of if it's something Bond can find with a bucket, it's something anyone can find with a bucket. So you're missing the the magic of spycraft in it a bit. Yeah, um, he he <laughs> finds he finds Angelo and gets his dog tags and his watch. Yeah, if, until you work out why he's doing it, it just mm. really weird. He goes into a cockpit full of dead guys and then just twocks one of their watches. Yeah. And you go, is this his mission? Just to steal stuff, take it home, and M's got a stall. <laughs> so, <laughs> dead people's watches. Him just walking up and down the beach. <laughs> Do you want to watch? <laughs> I've got proof this goes up to 30 metres. Because <laughs> the guy was dead, but the watch was working. Mm. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. We couldn't even tell you what time he died because the watch is still working. <laughs> so then he meets Domino again and they have some underwater sex. And he brings her ashore yeah. and then says, Look, I've got bad news for you, Domino. And she's like, Oh. You're leaving. And he's like, no, 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 no. It's not that. Your brother's dead. <laughs> he's like, oh. You couldn't tell me that before. Or, uh, no, we have to do the sex first. He sucks her foot as well, doesn't he? That, that's mm, it. Does. And it's, this is a bit as well where this whole sequence, the build up here and the beach stuff, feels very much like Dr. No yes. again. Yes. It's all staged. Like, it's Terence Young doing it again. It's the Ursula mm. Andrews thing. There's a lot of beach antics. And this feels, the whole film feels by being in love with that. Nassau Caribbean Ian Fleming thing. Yeah. And she's Very got a honey like, rider's voice. Yeah, yes, it doesn't fucking help. Oh, my boat is too small to be noticed. And I often come here to get the shells. You're the only man to ever make me cry. <laughs> Except perhaps Francois, my brother, when we were children. Domino, I have to tell you something. So he, cho- he shows her how to work the Geiger counter and gives her a bit of a briefing, and then we notice that Vargas is sneaking around them like Paul Burrell whenever you say Diana's name. <laughs> uh, yeah, and he, he kills Andy de la Tour yeah. with a harpoon. He... he must have followed us. I think he got the point. Yeah, harpoon is a sexy way of killing someone. You know, it's to a, a good, tree, yeah, it's pretty it's good. A, it's a good Bond thing. Yeah. Um, it's the way someone will be killed in a very late Midsummer Murders <laughs> yeah. uh, when they've run out of poisonings. But yeah, it's good. It's good. So then she, in exchange, she tells them about a secret set of steps uh, to the sea that no one's allowed to go near to where he'll find Largo and his men. Yeah. So he goes down there and then we begin the fucking drudgery of him <sighs> going with Largo and everybody and getting the missiles. And then he gets recognised somehow. 
there are lots and lots of identical scuba men yes. underwater. Yeah. And this is, again, this is another insult to injury thing. Bond is disguised as them, so they all look the fucking same. Mm. You can't tell which one's him. No. It's rubbish. Yeah. And and at this point, you realise that the brilliant gadget, the one you want the corgi toys of, the one yeah. you want to buy, belongs to the baddies. Yeah. Because they've got these amazing uh, underwater C5 scooter things mm. and this thing that looks like a manta ray. It's just everything they own is brilliant. And mm. it's just this whole thing, it's this whole film in which the baddies have all the cool stuff. You've got a franchise in which the goodies have all the cool stuff and you make a film in which the only cool stuff, Bond had a bucket two mm. scenes ago and then they've got like an underwater <laughs> stingray Jerry Anderson machine. Everything mm. about it is brilliant. But so Domino begins her search of the Disco Volante with the Geiger counter, but Largo catches her immediately. And when she drops her camera, it starts going like, like a Geiger, Geiger counter. Yeah. And she's like, ah, oh, it's just toy what Bond gave you. And then yeah. he ties her up and starts threatening to torture her with a cigar and ice cubes. Yes, a weird torturey thing. Yeah. And then, then George from Drop, Drop the Donkey comes in. <laughs> That bloke who's who I I, I kept the hero who, of the film, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yes, actually, yes. Um, but someone who I I don't know the character's name. I can't remember. He's who was, called Coots. Is he some kind of scientist who knows about nuclear bombs? Yeah, he looks like Peter Laurie uh, stuntman. Yeah, but yeah. weirdly, he's this very sort of beta character. That you suddenly realise, oh, hang on, he's to do with the plan. Yeah, he's the the baddie with the heart. Yeah. So I kind of think I'd like to have met him a few times or know who he was. He turns up and he sort of helps stop Domino being tortured and things. Maybe I should have been keeping an eye on you. Well, I think what we're seeing here is that Kutza sees her all tied up and ready to be tortured and thinks, this isn't what I'm about, so I'm going to rescue yeah. her. Then he he, de- he then decommissions the missile. Yeah, meanwhile, the Bond doesn't get to do that. Yeah, meanwhile, underwater there's this fucking bewildering thing going on, which is like watching Blue Planet in a, in a tumble dryer. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. It's just like endless people who look identical hitting each other. And that, that, some good guys in red wetsuits mm. arrived. And mm. for a minute you think, oh, this is good because they're in different colours, so there's an away strip, so I can tell which mm. team. Yeah. At last, there are some goodies and baddies. Yeah. But they, 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 they come in, and it's not quite 100% clear how they've been called in. And it's never, I, I don't know, it's never good when conventional forces come in to help Bond out. But also, Bond's just, got a special jetpack um, <laughs> scuba gear, hasn't he? Yes, it's got scuba this, gear with a propeller on it. Yeah, that 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 is a thing that Q's given him, mm. and it's got uh, it, make, it makes yellow stuff come out. Looks like he's pissed himself underwater. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but also mainly so you can tell which one's Bond. Yes. Otherwise, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't and know. there's a real feeling they've gone underwater with all this kit, and they're doing the scripts by Jacques Cousteau, and mm-hmm. everyone. The, all the dialogue is that a OK sign. That's all you can do. Mm. And they suddenly realise they're really limited. It's, all you can see is people going backwards off boats. <laughs> That's mm-hmm. all that's going to happen. Yep. They got excited by a new technology and a new sport and then realised that, weirdly, even though it is a, the most beautiful thing you can film, it doesn't work for an action movie. No. And I suppose the only thing is I, you wouldn't have known that. No. You would have thought this would be... But weirdly, the moment they go underwater, Bond's out of the action, so the guys doing stuff you can understand are... The people above water level are far more exciting. Yeah, because Bond's lost in this, this melange of little diver men. It's rubbish. The diver men surrender, so Largo releases the Volante from its back end and then shoots off as this catamaran. Can we also say another point for better mm. gadgets than Bond's got? Bond yep. hasn't had a cool boat. No. The baddie's got this astonishing boat that breaks in half, like a mm. brilliant Lego toy you might make. Yeah. And that's real as well. They built that boat. It's they brilliant. Did. It yeah. actually, and it really works. That's really exciting. The yeah. boat breaks in half. Fantastic. Mm. So Bond gets on board, into the cockpit, a fight breaks out, and oh. then, my favourite bit in the film, Neil from The Young Ones comes in going, <laughs> surprise! <laughs> it's a bloke carrying a tray with a champagne glass, champagne <laughs> a glass in it. I'm guessing it was his birthday. And he thought, I don't care what's happening, I'm going to celebrate my birthday. But what does Bond do? He kicks him in the chest and pushes, punches him down the stairs. Yeah. You'll remember that birthday for a while. <laughs> Rise. <laughs> yeah, it's a quite stupid fight done in the fast, fast boat. The boat's going at about 14 million miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to hyperspace. The yeah. stars are streaming past. And it's, they, they, uh, it's, it's made even more stupid because the underwater stuff's been so slow hmm. that you get the feeling that as soon as you go above water, 
everything feels twice as fast anyway. Yeah. And they've un- they undercrank the shit out of the boat. It's really stupid. Lago, who's sort of wrapped like a sort of Austrian smoked cheese in this sort of very, very tight wetsuit. Yeah. Uh, looks like he's been inflated from below. Big, giant Ernie Wise. <laughs> uh, just, yep. It's just um, astonishingly uh, rubbish looking. But he's about fight. to kill Bond and then um, Domino shoots him in the back with a harpoon. Yeah. And she says, I'm glad I killed him. You're glad. And I'd like to point out at this point is that our mate could say has defused yeah. the bombs, rescued <laughs> Domino, and yeah. then and then he comes into the cockpit with Domino, and then Bond says to her, Who's this? And she says, I don't know. Who's he? I don't know, but he helped me. Look out, the rocks. Yeah. Thanks, lads. He's like He's like Spot from Hong Kong Fooey. Yes. Another reference for the kids. Yeah. The cat who does everything gets no credit. Mm. But then they have to jump. And then Kutsay, uh, the hero of this film, says, <laughs> I can't swim. And he says, yeah. you'll figure it out. They jump into water. A plane flies overhead and drops a dinghy for Bond and Domino. Kutsay, meanwhile, is flailing in the water. <laughs> <laughs> and then they get skyhooked to safety in a way, by the way, that looks like it would kill them both instantly. <laughs> yeah. And could say he's in a water with dead bodies and sharks. 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 <laughs> he's just saved the world. I think that, that might that might rate alongside when Roger uh, throws or uh, pushes the little tie boy into the water yes. in, in Golden Gullers. The most ungrateful Bond's ever been for someone who was really helping. Yeah. Poor old could say. And I, I defend it a lot. I think the first two acts are solid, and then it just falls down the stairs. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I overcranked so it goes down the stairs. <laughs> Really 400 fast. miles an hour. With a telephone round its neck. Yeah. 